What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster here on this Saturday night, Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th, 2022. It's about 8.27 p.m. here along the West Coast in California. And latest earthquake activity shows a, uh, looks like a 2.2 on the big island of Hawaii. Got some activity really ramping up here along the West Coast, big island. And also down here around New Zealand, things kicking up here around the South Island area. Let's go ahead and check out some activity here across the USGS map. I'm going to start off here along the West Coast where we see an activity ramping up here in Northern California, including a 4.2 earthquake just earlier uh, this afternoon time period. Since then, we've seen a pretty good swarm of earthquake activity, including some twos and some ones, and I'm sure many, many other earthquakes as we see here now on the petroleum graph, I'm still seeing some activity at this hour. Uh, also about that time, the 4.2 kicked up, seeing some movement up around Mount St. Helens with a 1.5. Also some activity just off of the, um, the Sawtooth Fault system here near Stanley, Idaho. A little bit of activity in this region, including a, a 3.4 and a 2.6. Now, some movement also into the Texas area earlier today, outside of Midland, northeast of there. Now, if you remember, we did see some activity here in this region over the last couple of weeks, a couple of swarms north of Midland and south of Midland at one of uh, Texas's uh, largest earthquakes here, 5.4 near Range Hill, out there in the oil fields. Now we're seeing a little bit of activity out in a separate oil field, 3.2, western Texas, Let's go ahead and check out uh, the satellite view here real quick. What do we got here? Oh yeah, a bunch of wastewater injection facilities and sites out here in the beautiful state of Texas, no doubt. But man, is it littered with a, a lot of wastewater oil pumping operations, fracking operations, all that good stuff out there in the Texas area. So migration of the earthquake activity generally localized here but scooting to the east and that kind of makes a sense there with the uh, general plate movement out here along the north american area a lot of times we'll see movement head from west to east kind of what we've seen here uh today now let me scoot back here to the uh, uh other map mississippi did see some activity as well following the uh, texas earthquake activity much further east just goes to show you the uh, general plate movement here across the North American region. A 2.5 near Boonville, Mississippi, 12 kilometers deep. This originally came in as a 2.7 earthquake. Now, I'm not for certain if there's any um, pumping operations out here or uh, wastewater injection disposal sites. It's kind of hard to tell with the heavy, heavy vegetation out there in the jungle of Mississippi. But uh, either way, right next to a pond, I'm not for sure if that's a swimming pool or if it is indeed some type of, uh, kind of hard to tell. Really is hard to tell in that area. But uh, either way, a little bit of earthquake activity out there. Let me check out the um, U.S. hazard map way outside the New Madrid seismic zone. So um, hard to say with these little oddball earthquake uh, activity there taking place. All right, let me bounce out of here real quick, see what we got. Uh, Hawaii, now that's a big one kicking up here. There's a lot of activity kicking up within the last couple hours right around Kilauea Volcano, also offshore um, to the east of the hill in the slump, east of Pahala. Nothing going on specifically around the Lohi Seamount. In fact, some of these earthquakes are way deep. Nothing of concern at the surface, but there's something brewing down below. I'm just not 100% certain what it is. Uh, one earthquake here around the crater area of Kilauea Volcano. Let's go ahead and check out the volcano hazards map here uh, at Kilauea Volcano. I know we've been watching some activity kicking up there on a couple of the seismograph stations that look a little on the um, odd side. Now I'm going to check it out here and see if we still have it. Past 12 hours of activity here still shows that odd activity now these are not earthquakes earthquakes are going to look something like these up here 
But whatever's going on, it's spread out. Uh, this this looks like magma movement, almost 99% certain it is. Um, we're definitely seeing some type of magma activity going on below. Now, there hasn't been really any update on this uh, from the uh, folks there at the USGS. The last one was a few days ago, and we probably won't see one for a couple days unless something major happens. But that signature that I'm seeing is showing up across numerous seismograph stations. So this is not just environmental noise from somewhere else, you know, like say a generator coming on uh, within the vicinity of a seismograph station. That's not that. Whatever it is, it's showing up um, strongly across the local seismograph stations here around Kilauea Volcano. And it's not earthquake activity. That looks like something, something brewing underneath the surface here. Magma moving around, bubbling up. Who knows? Uh, definitely something brewing around the Kilauea volcano. It's just kind of odd. This stopped completely right about the time the Mauna Loa eruption stopped. So I, I don't, I don't really believe in such things as a coincidence. There, it's there's got to be a reason behind that. Uh, Yellowstone National Park up here around the Wyoming area did see um, the signature from that earthquake around Idaho. That's going to be this one right here. Uh, the earthquake there in Idaho. Let me jump back over here. Again, was a uh, three-pointer. 3.4 coming in this afternoon, followed up by a 2.6. So no localized activity showing up there across Wyoming, uh, Yellowstone area. But uh, either way, it's, I wouldn't be surprised to see a swarm kick up pretty soon with all the activity around the North American plate. 4.5, 4.0 off the uh, Prince Rupert area, Canada. That, uh, it's about the only activity we've seen that was early this morning, about 1 o'clock in the morning. Now, we have seen some activity kicking up here uh, along the Aleutian Trench and areas around the Curl Kamachaka Trench. Look at this earthquake, 113 kilometers deep, 5.3. Uh, some activity along the Aleutian Trench as well, 4.5 earlier this afternoon. And uh, general, generally shown a little bit of uptick here across the northern Pacific Ring of Fire. And over here around the Izu Trench, that earthquake early this morning, just after mid, uh, midnight, a 5.5, 521 kilometers deep for that super deep earthquake there into the Izu Trench. Haven't really seen any adjustment yet, but uh, we know uh, when that activity is kicking up down dip, downstream into the subduction zones, things start to crack and pop underneath extreme stress along this plate boundary it's, it's eventually going to happen so watch that area pretty closely we did see one earthquake over here around iran this one coming in early this morning a 5.1 iran iran not iran iran okay got it see all those comments there from folks <laughs> they're stuck in my brain it never ends okay um further down south here into papua new guinea looks like a couple newer earthquakes uh near the vanuatu area it's seen a 4.9 but uh, down here along New Zealand, I kind of want to look at this activity. We've seen a 4.8 shaking things up here off South Island area. Along the plate boundary, it's a pretty, pretty good plate boundary here. Uh, now for the latest activity, I want to go to the GeoNet servers and take a look at what we have here. Uh, they're reporting it as a 5.0 two hours ago. Prior to that, we did see a 4.0 a little bit further south um, along that plate boundary. So things kicking up in New Zealand uh, within that area, and I think that's still in that zone that needs to be, uh, well, needs to catch up, so to speak. And by catch up, it means uh, not French fries or chicken nuggets. Basically, it means it needs to catch up in terms of the the activity we've seen here over the last month or so. Uh, over the last few weeks, we've seen a lot of sixes and sevens up here, up around Solomon Islands, Papua New Guinea. Vanuatu area with very minimal activity across New Zealand. Yes, we've seen some uh, some swarms and a couple other earthquakes. Uh, let me go back to the 30 days, 4.5 and above, but nothing. Uh, if you really look at it, in most of this activity, there's some activity around Lake Tapo, super volcano. But all this adjustment up here, there, it's it definitely has to catch up here in this area. This region around New Zealand has to be under some extreme stress out here with the uh, considerable movement up north 
westward over here as well. Um, it's it's along a major plate boundary, major subduction zone here, Hikurangi subduction zone. Got the Alpine Fault there across South Island, New Zealand. Uh, it's it's yeah, watch that area pretty closely. That's all I'm going to say for now. Uh, up further along the Kermadec Trench, at, uh, that 4.9 coming in earlier this afternoon, uh, about 10 kilometers deep. So watch this area. It's showing uptick, and that's a region that needs to play catch up. Also up here along the Kurokamachaka Trench, this area needs to catch up as well. It's just um, it's been awfully quiet along this region. All right, uh, let's see here. Any other further activity? I'm just, I'm kind of avoiding this area right now because I'm uncertain as to what that signature is. Um, and I'm waiting for some type of response there from the USGS in regards to that odd earthquake activity showing up on the uh, Kilauea uh, seismograph stations. Hopefully we'll hear something maybe Monday. Uh, tremor department, very light, six epicenters of tremor. Not a big deal whatsoever, but either way, activity remains along the west coast here, northern California, staying active. And uh, up and down the state here, we've seen a little bit of activity across the Bay Area today. Uh, a couple twos and some ones out around Hayward. Hayward is the key right now along the Hayward Fault. And this area is very capable of producing a, a pretty good sized earthquake. And I would say there's a good chance of that. Uh, here pretty soon. There's a lot of fault systems out here across the west coast that are overdue. Uh, the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault is one of them. But right now there's not a whole lot of activity occurring down there in the southern portion of the state. Uh, South America region did see some activity here. We did see a 5.0 around noontime today, followed up by a 4.4. Argentina area underneath Argentina, 155 kilometers deep. Uh, so regionally deep activity occurring along the Peru-Chile Trench. So we definitely did see a considerable uptick across many areas today, and that includes North American Plate. Uh, all around the Pacific Plate showed some adjustment. So I think something's uh, something is in the works here pretty soon, as far as uh, larger scale activity goes. And the question is where. Uh, just got to look at these little regions that really haven't seen any major earthquake activity uh, or showing signs of swarming. Uh, for example, around New Zealand, um, just got to be on guard, folks. Be on guard and stay safe out there if something does happen. That's for sure. Uh, real quick look at the space weather activity here. Solarham.net site. Looks like a potential G1 class storm here a little bit uh, after Christmas time. Uh, aside from that, uh, we got a 3169. Looks like it's harboring a little bit of a, a beta gamma class. Looks like 60% chance for a C flare, M flare around 10. But the sunspot there, 3169, is... Uh, let's see here. Over here, off to the side, so... It's in that regional large sunspot. It's kind of gaining a little bit further instability, but uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of potential there right now, at least looking at that. Uh, and we got a couple newer sunspots around the bend here. But overall, I don't think our flare threat is super elevated at all. Um, in fact, 60% chance that these guys are claiming for a C flare, M flare at 10, X flare around 1%. And looking at the past couple days of solar flare activity, Shows pretty minimal conditions there, uh, fairly minimal across the area with those sunspots. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Uh, going to cut it just a little short tonight. And um, Merry Christmas to those that celebrate out here. Hope everyone enjoys the time with their family. Happy holidays. And uh, we did our Christmas yesterday. We'll probably do a little bit more tomorrow as well. But, uh, you know, sometimes those kids, they can't wait. They gotta, <laughs> they get excited. So we, we kind of give in, me and Miss Mimi, so we give in a little bit and, uh, you know, just kind of make, kind of bring some smiles to their faces a little bit early. But uh, Christmas will be coming tomorrow as well. Either way, uh, enjoy the time, folks. Enjoy the time, the memories, and um, just uh, the holiday season here with the family. That's pretty important. Have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys sometime tomorrow. Stay safe out there.